Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another action-packed episode of the Burton Burger Podcast. Happy to have all of you here with us today. We have a special guest, as always. Uh, we got Conquer97 on the podcast today, as well as my beautiful and lovely cousin, Bert, as my co-host. Bert, I don't give a shit about you. Conquer, yes. how you, how you doing, man? I'm doing excellent. I'm doing really, really good. Thanks for asking. How are you guys? We are good. not too shabby, I guess. It's 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 doing okay. Yeah. Uh, doing a lot better now that we got a, a badass guest on the show. Bert, Bert was yelling at me for a while when I was getting too many guests on the show, so I'm glad I uh, could have somebody to actually talk to, you know, during during this podcast. It's fun, Conquer. When I when I have people I can I can talk to on this on this fucking show because somebody doesn't talk to me that much so happy to yeah, have that's rough to have you here guys we are burton burger we we're just trying to bring a little bit of the family element to the podcast world but where can they find us at yeah we have full episodes up on youtube and spotify as well as highlight clips up on twitter and tiktok with some extra video game clip whoa <clears throat> extra video game clips and some other fun stuff throughout the week on the old talk mm -hmm. Absolutely, Conquer. So why don't you uh, introduce yourself to uh, to the fans out there? Tell us who you are, what you do, man. I uh, I'm my, my name's Conquer. I'm I guess I'm a video game content creator, kind of on all platforms. Um, I value YouTube a lot. My main goal is to kind of become a YouTuber, and I like to just stream for fun and kind of do TikTok for marketing and promotion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, big dreams being a big YouTuber, huh? You wanna you wanna overthrow pewds or something, or you just kind of wanna make a little bit of a living out of it? What 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 are the plans behind uh, someone that wants to be a YouTuber? Uh, my goal, I wouldn't say overthrow pewds, but I'm I'm trying to reach the size <laughs> pewds. That's for sure. Sure. Oh yeah. Be, oh yeah. Be twinsies with them, kind of thing. Yeah, I don't I don't really want to shoot low. I kind of want to shoot for the stars, do as much as I can, make myself stand out and kind of see where it takes me, you know? If you shoot high, you hopefully will reach the stars. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, no they say shoot for the moon because if you miss, you could land in the stars. Ooh. Exactly. <laughs> mm. Or it's a wisdom. Uh, absolutely. I think I saw that like on a Pinterest post. But anyways, uh <laughs> ha plan. happy to have you on, man. So, uh found you man on the old talk and it was your cut the bullshit game review for uh man eater looks like that was uh a pretty successful video for you man yeah no i was honestly really surprised that it was successful i i thought maybe more of the mainstream games would be popping more off that and i kind of saw man eater off xbox game pass and i was just like fuck it let's just i don't know it looks kind of interesting let's do review on it and i, I had a lot of fun playing and I guess TikTok really liked watching the video and kind of bantering back and forth in the comments. Yeah, absolutely. No, um, it, it was it was a good review, definitely. I, w I went and checked it out. I was literally just playing it um, before we we got in this call here. So there you go. Um, gave it a whirl, checked it out. So your your cut the bullshit reviews is. It was just you reviewing video games, but being honest with it, right? You're not beating around the bush. You're not, you're not trying to hurt or save anybody's feelings. I mean, you're just telling them what you think. So basically, the main premise for my cut the bullshit, I've been kind of working on it and kind of thinking about it for over a year now. My first cut the BS was released on YouTube um, about ten months ago. I think it was August on Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, but the main premise mm -hmm. of it is I was always kind of tired of all those 15, 20 minute bullshit long like review videos of them, you know, going so in depth in this stuff. And I really just want like a, you know, straight to the point, five minute or less review on the game that I'm looking at. Right. Mm -hmm. But for TikTok, yeah. I, mean, I mean, you're kind of limited down to one minute. So I kind of been just trying to do it on TikTok and do my little spiel for one minute on, on video games that I played in the past. Gotcha, absolutely, and then it took off. So when you saw the channel get what was like a quarter of a million views or something like that for for fucking man eater, um, did that did that help out the brand a lot? Did that really uh, like kind of trickle down to other social medias for you? So I've um, this is kind of my second channel that I've started. Um, I'm a big avid single player uh, video game player. I love my single players. I love my RPGs. But I never really knew how to build content okay. around it. Um, on my other channel, I kind of struggled with converting a lot of my audience over to my YouTube and also my Twitch. 
So I'm kind of just trying to figure out a whole process of doing that on this account. And it's been really good. Like I've gotten a lot of offline followers on my Twitch, but I, I'm trying to figure out and trying to learn how to bring that audience more over to YouTube since I kind of, you know, have bigger dreams to become a YouTuber than a, than a streamer. Sure. Oh, yeah. Sure. Bert, uh, what, what do you think? Do you think uh, we can tell old Conquer here some advice on uh, how to grow a YouTube <laughs> channel? Oh, um, some tips and tricks that uh, we've cheesed along the way. Um, yeah, no, I don't know. If, oh my god, <laughs> yeah, ours is pretty shameful. <laughs> yeah, Man, feel kind of dirty. Up, if the numbers go up, who gives a shit? <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. Uh, yeah. So we we definitely know what you mean by using TikTok to try to grow something Marketing. else, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the whole reason why we got behind talk in the first place is uh, to to build our YouTube channel. Um, we would always whisper the word TikTok back in the day, like it was Voldemort or something, <laughs> like something <laughs> weren't <laughs> weren't supposed to say. Uh, and, and, and we started getting so many fucking subs from talk. Um, and we, we can't, I mean, it's almost like we have to whisper YouTube now almost. It just feels dirty. It's treated us so well. So, uh, did you, it's crazy. did you happen to look at our, uh, <laughs> our TikTok at all and, and see the kind of stuff we post? I, I glanced a little bit at it be right before the podcast right. just to kind of do a little bit more research. Um, yeah, it looked a little bit. It looks like you guys are trying to encourage people to subscribe to your YouTube by coloring in their their county or their province, eh? Is that little <laughs> that little technique you guys are talking about growing the YouTube? Yeah, gosh, it sounds so <laughs> disgusting hearing other people. No, do you know it. what? I yeah. look, look, I was always against doing that kind of stuff. All my friends are telling me on my YouTube, you gotta you gotta tell people to subscribe, you gotta tell people to put the bell notifications on. Because a lot of the times people forget and as shameful as some people think it is, those strategies and those techniques work in order to grow your channel. And I've kinda had to realize that over, you know, the last little bit that like Mm-hmm. at the end of the day fuck it like you know you're trying to get views you're trying to make this into your career if you got to find some weird way to different unique way to get people to go subscribe to you or follow you f- just do it right at the end of the day you're a creator yeah. you're, you're trying to make a podcast you're trying to get people to sub to your youtube right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah absolutely yeah we should uh that is a good way of looking yeah at we it. should cut it yeah and just post that as our like our ringtone or something when people start <laughs> Like, Call fuck everyone man. else, man. If, if they don't fuck you, <laughs> if they don't feed you, or if they don't pay you, why the fuck do they matter, right? Hell yeah. If, if they're there paying you, you by your subs and stuff like that, then, you know, those are people you care about. If they want to laugh at you and be like, haha, you're the one who's, like, asking us to do these weird little wacky things just to subscribe to us, they won't, they won't you know, they won't watch your content later on. Hell yeah. True. Sure. So basically, fuck all you guys. That's what I'm exactly. hearing. Exactly. Fuck here. everyone that's not subbed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the Go heck? click the subscribe button right now. Go to their YouTube. Follow them. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, w- w- what a sweetheart. He acts like there's more than like six people outside of our family that listen to the show. <laughs> yeah, okay. We don't let our family know about this. <laughs> yeah, back. literally. No, but I definitely feel you, man. So the big thing is um, with this kind of shit is we – there was really – a hard way to, to to grow this kind of stuff. I mean, we're we're making a podcast where we talk about balls and wieners. I mean, there's literally a million other podcasts out there. So well, you you got to find ways to to stick out of the crowd, which we refuse to do. So, so what we did mm-hmm. is we 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 think there's something here. We think that maybe we can make like six dollars a year off of this podcast. So <laughs> we oh, just yeah. needed to get more eyes on this fucking thing and we didn't know how to do it so that's when we went to talk and then started doing this county thing and because people love seeing a piece of them on somebody else's channel or somebody else's work uh, it's just like when you go to college and you do these cute little things where you you, you come in with your little freshman cohort of literally 6,000 fucking people and you put mm-hmm. a little paint on your hand and then you put the hand on the on the, this banner, and you're like, "Oh, look at there's my hand on like that has like thirty other fucking hands on top of it." You're like, "Nah, I can see my fingernail. It's fine." So people will go out of their way to go do something just to see a little bit of themselves 
in that something. So Mm -hmm. that's where the county videos come in place. It's like, yo, you're not special, by the way. There's literally 300 and some counties with thousands and maybe millions of people in here. And if though if if it all it takes is for me to color in a little square <laughs> on a map and we get subs from it, thank you. We'll do that all goddamn day Why long. Not? <laughs> no. Kind of thing. And then we get beautiful guests on like Conquer because of it. So it uh it all works out, man. So I guess if you wanna wanna do the county videos too, Conquer. Go right ahead, man. <laughs> it, it's crazy though. Like um, a lot of a lot of people that view TikToks, a lot of them value the recognition from like bigger accounts and stuff like that. Even if you like you reply to their comments, or you stitch it, oh, yeah. or you duet it, reply with video. Like a lot of people will go crazy over that. And um, mm-hmm. it's a lot of it just comes down to f- having that recognition, having that that feeling of someone actually replying to them, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's probably a little bit like Twitch. It's exactly like Twitch. It really yeah. is. Like the the viewer wants to go to a Twitch chat to talk with people amongst the Twitch, and also potentially get you know shouted out by by the Twitch streamer with their donation, with their sub, with their quirky little text to speech message, whatever it may be. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. A lot of it's just the, you know the act of getting noticed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like Twitch, kind of like OnlyFans, uh, stuff like ex- that. <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> I know a lot of through my TikToks, I, I try to think of ways that I can get the audience to comment because those comments are what really bring up the the, the views of the TikToks, right? Mm-hmm. Because if someone, people just yeah. watch it, they skip through half of it and they don't comment, a lot of the time it won't go anywhere unless you give them a reason to comment. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where I built I, I thought of, that's where I kind of like built my um cut the bs reviews off of because you can't fit enough info in five minute uh in one minute it's impossible like oh, yeah. depending on the game unless it's like a top-notch game you can just say it's fucking remarkable this game's the best ever go play it I'm leaving out a lot of details from my cut the bs that a lot of people will go and fill in in the comments saying you forgot about this uh you can actually include mods in the fallout 4 console edition or this game's absolute fucking horseshit your review is wrong. Go fuck yourself. You know you're you're a piece of shit. And though they just feel they help me. They they you know they help the algorithm. They help the the video show. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So those comments are crucial. Yeah. yeah. And big time. It that's another way that the county video kind of cheese the fucking system there i swear what we need to do is like once once we get bigger and we don't need to rely on these we should just go through and delete all the fucking county videos I, I so people don't TikTok. think we're a bunch of losers i hate tiktok it's, it seems incredibly biased uh not really biased but it seems kind of like a bullshit way of dealing with things since like anybody could have an opportunity to grow Mm -hmm. Which is really good. It is. Don't get me wrong. But I see a lot of these bullshit ass TikToks and these bullshit ass videos that blow up. And you see so many of the ones that people (laughs) put a lot of efforts in. I'm not saying mine. I'm saying I saw a lot of other people who they're just small channels putting in the work and nothing showing. Mm -hmm. But you see this bullshit video. I've made a couple. Go like mega million, like 10 plus million views off of the stupidest things ever. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've made some YouTube videos, like some pretty edited stuff like gameplay footage and, and like stuff like that and then you put it up there like next to our normal content and it gets like fractions of the views it's like damn mm-hmm. it's rough yeah well no, it's like it's like the podcast like we put so much effort into this we sit down for an hour and 15 minutes hour and a half once a week think of things to talk about try to be entertaining that whole entire time and we'll upload it to youtube and get six views. You're like, hell yeah. Mm. Hell yeah. That's more than last time. And then I'll literally (laughs) prop my fucking phone up against my headphones, hit record, talk out of my ass to uh, coloring in a fucking square on the United States map, and then it gets like 9,000 views on it. It's like, okay. And, and then con- you're like, "Hey guys, we have it's a crazy. we have a podcast. Check the head out." And you're like, "No, fuck you, color in Argentina, Texas." Or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, okay, it's kind of demoralizing, isn't it? Like you put all this mm-hmm. work for nothing, and then you make some bullshit thing. Like my other account, my most like biggest TikTok that blew up a half a million views was me just fucking dancing to zombies, like the zombies Easter egg. <laughs> 
And I thought about it in yeah, two funny. seconds. I didn't think it'd go anywhere, and then boom, people loved it. And I was just like, dude, why am I even putting effort into like half my other shit? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we're trying to find something that sticks here outside of the podcast. So we've done things with video game like glitches and bloopers. We've done things where we've done video game challenges. I've done like these real mini docu series things on famous singers and game show funny moments like things like that and they're they're doing fine but they never go as far as the the county videos do where it's stupid mindless talking where i don't even try to make jokes anymore on it because if i try to make jokes i run out of i run out of time for that 15 second video so it's usually (laughs) thank you for coming in your county here it is Comment your county. So bye, <laughs> and, and, and that's it. So it's it's definitely fucking. And, and, and don't even get it started on YouTube, man. Like, there's no way in hell we can grow on YouTube without using a, a third party there. Yeah, YouTube's YouTube's a whole other different ball game. It's really tricky. A lot of, you just kind of have to wait for that big break, that big thing to kind of pop open on the recommendation and people to click on it. Right, mm-hmm. finding that run, yeah. right t- title, finding that right thumbnail. It's you know, it's difficult. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I saw on your main talk profile that I think it was that it was somewhere you're a YouTube partner, you said, right? Yeah. And so you met the requirements of the thousand plus subs and the whatever, 4,000 hours of watch time, right? Yeah. Okay. So Bert and I just reached a thousand subs a few days ago and... Um, after we wiped each other's tears away and everything like that, we got back to work. Mm. We're like, all right, so mm-hmm. where's your penthouse going to be? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what color is your yacht going to be, Bert? <laughs> don't don't exactly. choose red. That's my color. <laughs> and, and, and then we go and look at YouTube, and it's like, lol, you need 4,000 hours of watch time as well as the 1,000 subs. And, yep. yo, we literally have, like, 170 hours, lol. <laughs> Do we? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, we're, we're very, very far away from getting our yacht. So, I guess what color is your yacht, <laughs> okay. Conker? Uh, red. I'm, I'm a big fan of red. <laughs> Damn. Red, red's my okay. favorite color, for sure. <laughs> what? Well, I'll be joining the red what? gang with you. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm get back, Bert. So, um, w- what happened after you got when you became that YouTube partner? Did anything change? Did you get some more stuff? Did YouTube reach out? I mean, w- at the end of the day, we're still such a tiny YouTube channel compared to the ones YouTube might actually give a shit about, right? So, what what was that like for you? Um, I mean, it was a, it was an exciting milestone to be honest. Like it's a very, very big one, but it's really just the beginning because for a lot of creators getting a thousand subscribers and especially the 4,000 watch hours, it's not easy. It's really mm-hmm. difficult. Right. But you know, it's, it's just the beginning from, you know, hundred thousand, one mil, five mil, all those other big milestones. Right. Um, mm-hmm. as far as what's changed, nothing really has changed in the same shit. <laughs> You know, um, I've kind of been slacking on doing YouTube. I recently just finished university and that's been taking up a lot of my time. Okay. Um, and okay. then I've been really just focusing on a lot of TikTok because after doing YouTube for about a year and a half, nothing's really, you know, been growing my account more than, than TikTok itself. Mm-hmm. But I guess now that I'm done school, um, I do plan on going back on the YouTube grind and trying to do at least one video uh, out a week. Yeah, that would be neat. Yeah, no, and and you also, you have a lot of content that you can offer to people that is actually good for YouTube. With with our with us, it's hard because people aren't going to listen to a podcast on YouTube. They're going to listen to it on Spotify or something, because YouTube's a bitch. Definitely, uh, definitely. Oh, yeah. To, to listen yeah. to, so that's why we're trying to kind of build up that uh other criteria Bert and I got to step up our game now to actually put shit on the YouTube that can be digestible on YouTube sort of say to get those watch hours up and uh go from there so uh you you also do Twitch man how's how's Twitch going for you 
Twitch is all right. Um, I kind of just want to leave Twitch to just, you know, kind of not really be like my main focus of becoming a job. I really just wanted to do it as like a, a fun outlet. Um, play mm-hmm. games that I want to play that I won't really make YouTube videos on because, you know, there's no point in doing a whole video or a whole, I don't know, series on it, right? So I kind of just like to leave Twitch for that. I, I don't know. I, I get a little, um, I get a little, what's it called, anxious when I stream. So I don't really do it as often as I do. That's why I kind of prefer to okay. do TikTok and Twitch. I mean, TikTok mm-hmm. and YouTube. My apologies. You're sure. Yeah. So, yeah, you can be, uh, you can be a lot more edgy when making stuff for YouTube and and talk and be like, eh, it, maybe that's not a good one. I, I better not say that. <laughs> yeah, I can cut it out. It's easy to cut out, right? I don't gotta put on a face. Yeah. Like I can. I feel like every time I'm doing Twitch, is I gotta put on some sort of face, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, oh, yeah. a lot of the times, even if I'm not really feeling myself, I feel like you know, if I'm woke up a little bit bummed today, you know, I'm just like, oh, I don't really want to stream. And I had a schedule before. It didn't really work out for me. I feel like I just got to put on a face for Twitch rather than just being, you know, me. It's something I need to work on. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people that are just themselves on Twitch, but it's something I still need to kind of learn and grow from. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. To, to kind of put that person, I remember Critical, he said something about that too, where he went on a big hiatus from creating content because he was like, yeah, everybody always asked me to say pussy and titties and all that kind of stuff in every video, so I'd make a point to make sure I'd say those words. And it just became exhausting. I, you, you say a couple things as a joke, and then people want that out of you every time, and then it just becomes not funny and a bit miserable, to be honest. So if you got to constantly wear that mask or put on a different face, I, I could see that being tiring for you. It drains you and it just gets to a point where you don't want to stream or you don't want to make content, right? You kind of have to find a healthy medium of, you know, managing your mental health and also producing the content you want to produce, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and speaking of mental health, uh, you brought up a a quick point that I just want to throw in there. My my co-host was on like a mental health podcast last Sunday, weren't you, Bert? I was, yeah. Did you bring no, burger? I, um, <laughs> I wasn't I invited. Not. Tisk tisk tisk. No, this was a it was a vegan podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, that's a bad joke. Well. Um, no, so yeah, no, I went on a I um yeah, burger was scrolling through Reddit looking for uh, some different podcast opportunities, and uh, he saw the title for. Uh, I think what well, what's it I think it's called the Emo Cast podcast and they're like, "Oh shit. Bert likes shitty music. Let's send him this link and see if he's interested." <laughs> so I uh I went on a podcast, yep, last Sunday Father's Day. The Emo Cast podcast and talked about uh punk music with two female therapists. Oh, they're therapists. And it was <laughs> yeah, like yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here comes Bert from Bert and Burger going on a therapist podcast. I couldn't believe they yeah. wanted you to come on. I know. I know. I'm like, huh, this is kind of a weird fit. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so goofy and all that. And then it's like a super serious like <laughs> addressing stuff podcast. Oh my goodness. I had to like put on my hippie hat and talk about energy and stuff, so it was kind of fun. <laughs> they tear you apart? <laughs> no, no, I did good. Uh, yeah, well, I think we'll be the judges of that. Conquer. He thinks he does good <laughs> at literally everything. So. Oh yeah, I killed it, dude. Yeah, um, I find it funny that you were literally the first person from Burton Burger to go on another show. Yeah. The the one that doesn't talk and says he hates this podcast and doesn't want to do it because he gets bullied <laughs> okay. literally goes on another podcast by himself with two chicks yeah. that, Bert, you can say it, were very attractive. He let me know about it. He he told me they were babes. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully they're not listening to this, but yeah, yeah. Why? Why can't you say if a girl's attractive? What the fuck? Soon. I don't know. All right, Conker, careful. <laughs> you don't want girls to... 
think you, that you think they're pretty or anything I like that. Be a compliment. That, I guess. Like if if some person came in and called me attractive, I'd be like, oh, thank you, fuck yeah, yeah. Oh, I suppose, I suppose. I mean, yeah. they're like, what's like your how snap? creepy you get about it, right? If it's like, you know what, you're just attractive. Yeah, and you're like, damn, you got a fine ass, huh? you know. It's just there's yeah. Much, right? <laughs> you're you're not saying you want to suck on their boobies or anything like that. You're just saying, yeah. hey, yeah. I found you pretty, and like, oh boy, I hope they don't hear this. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, no. No, we were like in a Zoom call and they had their cameras on. I'm like, oh boy. Like, no. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> Did they ask? Were they like, yo, Bert, where's your face? And you're like, lol. <laughs> yeah, no. No, I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to be sitting this one out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I kind of forgot that Bert was supposed to do that. So he sends me this picture of the two chicks. <laughs> it just like their faces I like on Zoom. I'm like, are you like on OnlyFans right like, now? What the fuck? Are you like <laughs> Did you find that chick you matched with on Tinder and paid for her OnlyFans for a Zoom call or something? What the fuck are you doing? No. <laughs> nope. I just took a picture of my screen. I'm like, yep. I'm in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. So can't wait to hear that yeah. one. It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be cringe. I he, he probably shit the fuck out of the bed, ladies and gentlemen. In about, I think it's in about two weeks. So, yeah, they have to like edit and edit it and everything. It's like the most high quality podcast, <laughs> and they're only on like episode five or six. It's a long posting time. Like by the time you guys get one recorded, how how much longer do you have to wait to post it? Like three days, four days? I know a week. Oh, us? Yeah. Yeah. No, this is gonna be up by Friday. Yeah. So like three or four days. Yeah. Yeah, we, we we definitely try to get it out within the week, but I just to keep things. Fresh. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, no, it's uh, two weeks is tough, but Bert's probably gonna sound so hot for, oh, for big how time. long they edit it. They're just gonna oh, change yeah. your voice into something completely different. You're gonna sound like, like Matthew changer. McConaughey or something. <laughs> yeah, they release it. They just they take Bert out and guy. just put someone else in there. And Bert's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Hired a voice actor. You're like, oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, but no, just just had to shout that out. Bert was actually the first one to guest on another podcast. It wasn't even uh, it, it wasn't even both of us. It was literally Bert by himself. Yeah. There's no way in fuck I was going to talk about emo music. It's like, let's talk about my nah. boy. I could do that. <laughs> I could do that all damn day. Yeah. But emo... Yeah, this was a bit e- different. Yeah. Emo punk music? Nah. <laughs> that sounds yeah, it's pretty really good. retarded, but thankfully I have a retarded <laughs> co-host, so uh, it was perfect. we would love yeah. to come on. So we'll let you guys know fun. when that one comes out. But anyways, down to the main topic, the one that we've all wanted to talk about, video games. Conker plays a lot of oh, them. Yes. He's got a lot of content out on social media about it. Bert has no life on like Conker. He actually, you know, looks like a pretty sexy man and everything. Bert looks like Conker should look like. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. Hell yeah. Go ahead, Bert. Go ham. I know you've been wanting to giggle with a, a video gamer for a, a while now. So. I know we've. I think we've we've had a couple on, but they were like highly, highly specialized. Like we've had Apex players and stuff on. It's kind of hard to bring up other stuff when they're like high in the pro scene or whatever. Yeah, I can't I'm, ask I'm, about Mario Kart or nothing. I'm like a video game yeah. whore, so basically just throw any game out at me, <laughs> yeah. and I'll love it if it's good. You know, even if it's not that good, I'll, yeah, no. I'll still have a good time playing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I see a lot of stuff on here, like. Like, pretty much everything on here I'm either interested in or have played. So, it's pretty cool. The, um... This is where the shitty yeah, mainly come in, Conquer. This yeah. will happen. <laughs> yeah, no, I mainly checked out your uh, your YouTube channel. Um, so, yeah. Yes, yeah, so that, that's pretty cool. I see you have a lot of, uh, COD... A lot of modern warfare stuff on here. Yeah, I, I kind of went to go do that because it's kind of what was popping. Um, I was starting to do like a lot of Borderlands 3 content. And I wasn't yes. having fun making it. I, a lot of it felt forced. A lot of it was content I didn't really want to make. Um, the only <laughs> thing I really had ideas to make for that were um, tutorial videos, right? How to get the Rough Rider Shield, XP glitch, farm glitches. And, you know, it, as far as it's good for YouTube, those are my most viewed videos. 
I wasn't enjoying the content, so I decided to go for what was popping, what was booming, and that was Call of Duty. Okay. Yeah, no, it definitely looks like you have a lot of, um, like, information-focused or tutorial-esque kind of stuff. I don't like making that content, At least, though. It's, it's boring. No. I don't have fun doing it. Like, I don't want to sit there and teach someone how to fucking play a game. Right? I don't want to build my <laughs> yeah, channel around that. Like what that. kind of personality? You know, those are the kind of videos and those are the kind of content that I feel like people were search up. For example, one of my videos, you know, how to get your ride shield Damascus, how to get a gold. People watch the tutorial for mm -hmm. that to learn how to do that. They don't watch it for the content. They don't watch it for the content creator. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why I kind of want to step out that's from making point. just, you know, tutorial videos. I wanted to have some personality behind it. And that's where a lot of my drive for my Cut the BS comes in, too, because I want to make sure my personality is shown through the Cut the BS TikToks. That's why I like to make it a little bit more vulgar, a little bit more, you know, stylistic than just a yeah. cut and dry, like, monotone video like every other fucking review out there <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that is a good point i know there's a lot of uh especially damascus videos i've looked up and just kind of like dismissed i guess you don't care for the creator you just for care for the, the video right and i don't want that i want people to come watch me no matter what video i make and they look forward to the conquer content rather than hey how do i get this oh, gun yeah. gold yeah no trying to like build a brand or whatever exactly i guess whatever the term is yeah yeah. Okay. Do you have Damascus? Um, yeah, no, I was gonna ask. Uh, do I have Damascus? Yeah, he does. yeah. Yeah, I do. It was a bitch to get, and I wouldn't I'm fucking jealous. recommend getting it to anyone. Not worth my time. Yeah, I, I'm stuck on the fucking launchers. Dude, that was the worst. I can't figure out how to shoot art. I can't figure out how to shoot UAVs with the RPG. Hey, buddy, I. It's fucking. Dumb. I got a video out on that. If you want to go check it out, <laughs> it's one hey. of my popping videos. <laughs> Is, oh, let's cue that up. Yeah, I mean, they're good for the channel. I, I know I need to do more, um, just to kind of build it up a little bit, because none of my creative, none of my challenge videos do well, because a lot of it does have to do with SEO optimization, how people are searching for the video. Like, no one's going to be looking for one chess challenge. No one's going to be looking for melee challenge video in Warzone. Like, it's just not something people look up, right? People have their content creators or the people that they know. Like, let's say a lot of people love to watch Wildcat. Yeah. They go look for Wildcat videos. They're not going to search up some sort of Call of Duty challenges, right? Yeah. Yeah, that is kind of weird. You really got to think about it kind of from, I guess, the viewer perspective. You do. You have to really look into a lot of SEO optimization. But um, I kind of look at how I look at YouTube videos and how I click. Um, I kind of just scroll down my recommendation, kind of see something that pops out at me, right? A lot of it isn't SEO friendly. So that's why I rebranded a lot of my thumbnails. I went six months in the past of all my videos, rebranded all the thumbnails off of some things that I've learned about how to get audience retention, how to get better clicks. And also I've changed a lot of my titles and descriptions to kind of be a little bit more SEO friendly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know that I personally really do like, um, like a like a a flashy thumbnail, I guess, or like some sort of a story behind like what's going on. Yeah, it's Im it's kind of important, fun. especially for YouTube. Um, the reason I put my face in all of it, I didn't have it that way before. I didn't have my face in any, but um, I looked at a video that basically outlined that the less um and like the less a, a viewer needs to process that it's a conquer video or that it's your video, the better, right? So making it consistent. Mm -hmm your thumbnail consistent between every, at least one sort of aspect, whether it be a face, whether it be a logo, whether it be a style or drawing to make it consistent. So when somebody sees that video, they have to think a lot less that it's your video, you know, that really kind of, I do notice that on a lot of big channels. They, they do yeah. it for a reason. It's not just them doing it because they want their face in the picture, right? They do it because, you know, right. people instantly know that, Hey, that's a, I don't know, Tommy in it video, or that's a, it's a PewDiePie video, right? That's Pewds, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I heard another thing where people say it's because humans kind of subconsciously react better to faces. It like is we're, true. We're like, we have that innate thing built into us to where it's just like, ooh, face, interested. <laughs> it just <laughs> feels like thing. it's a little bit more mm. personal when you have a mm. person's face there, right? It's more than just, you know, a oh, video yeah. you're watching, right? Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. It's a quicker connection. The one thing that I despise those when that happens on TikTok, where it's a person's like close up on their face and you can only see from their nose up, and they're like pointing at something above them, and they're like, 
famous people's last words, part 18. <laughs> and, and then it just goes into like the actual content. It's just like nice. Fucking looking at this bridge of a goddamn forehead and a honker of a nose. <laughs> just Hell that yeah. has nothing to do with the criteria because it's like Conker said when when you have their face when you have their logo at the beginning it, there's a reason for it but then you get the people on talk that are literally 10 seconds of them pointing at the fucking ceiling with words above their head just, <laughs> just so the music oh, to I drop see that stuff yeah and that's another thing that's, that's great that shit <laughs> sucks when you're waiting for the music to drop I saw this one it was fuck marry or kill <laughs> today <laughs> <laughs> and it was just a sunset. I swear it was like ten seconds. It it really was. It it was it was tough. It was it was tough. Speaking of fuck Mary or kill, um it was uh it was Elizabeth Olsen, the actress that plays Wanda in the Marvel movies and in WandaVision. It was Gal Gadot, who is Wonder Woman in in the new movies. Mm-hmm. And Natalie Portman, who plays, I think it's Padme. Is that how you say it in the Star Wars movies? Something like that? I think so. Uh, she's in the Thor movies. It means Natalie fucking Portman. So I did my fuck, marry, or kill. I hate kill, by the way. That's so stupid. <laughs> You're going to fuck the thing. shit out of one of them. You're going to do a Middle Eastern wedding where they have no choice but to marry you, and you're going to kill another motherfucker. <laughs> it's a little primitive. Yeah, it's it's yeah, seriously. But yeah, I had my FMJ or FMK and uh uh it was nobody was agreeing with me. FMJ. Yeah. No? Yeah. Who would you pick? Yeah. The heck? I said I would marry Elizabeth Olsen. I'd absolutely just doggy this shit out of Gal Gadot. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> I would, I, I don't, I don't, this was a tough one, but yeah, just, just kick Natalie Portman in the shitter, I guess. I don't know. Wow. That's fucked up. I, yeah. I, you got to kill I someone, right? Yeah. I mean, you kind of married the wrong person, but that's just, that's just my opinion. Bert wasn't an option. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, true, true. so no, I, I really, I really want, I don't know. Natalie Portman's like your stereotypical, like hot actress though. Like the other girls are hot, but you don't hear people talk about them as being the most beautiful ones in Hollywood. Uh, Natalie Portman is, is one of them though. Uh, so I was like, yeah, I don't know who this was. But, yeah. Yeah. No, she definitely yeah. is. Everyone, everyone fucking loves Natalie Portman. So, you know, daddy, yeah. daddy likes the nobodies. Those are the ones that I like to tell myself I have a chance with. So yeah, I could fuck Gal Gadot. Of course. She'd want my body. Oh yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. So, but no, that, that bass drop though. It's literally just 10 seconds. It's like, fuck, Barry kill. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay. Like you start crying. Is it going to be all guys? <laughs> is it going to be girls? Is, <laughs> is it going to be like, like cartoon characters, like what the fuck's happening? And then like legit people showed up. So, yeah. do you guys play Apex? Uh, unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. yeah so I, I had one <laughs> on my um main channel, Fuck Mary Kill. Oh, um, okay. Okay, so Fuck Mary Kill for you guys, Marvin, Pathfinder, and Revenant. <laughs> okay, Marvin. Um, what would you guys choose? Pathfinder. And Revenant. Oh well, you definitely gotta fuck Revenant, marry Pathfinder, and kill Marvin. Okay, that's a terrible choice. Cause you gotta kill Revenant, cause then he'll kill you. <laughs> so I, wrong. If you show aggression, he's just gonna fucking. No, it cap said you. kill him. It didn't say get killed by him. It's automatic. He are, he just dies. That's oh. fair. So. So we'll get rid of the assassination bot. So you can go fuck him in the ass or fuck him in his oil hole or his exhaust pipe <laughs> as much as you want, Bert. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, I'll kill the motherfucker and uh, I'll marry Pathfinder. And I'll just fuck the shit out of Marvin, that little dirty whore. <laughs> I hate Marvin so much. Yeah. The piece of shit gives me grays every fucking time. <laughs> yeah. Are, are we spot on, Conkers? Is that what, that's is spot that what on? Said? I've your yours burger know. was a typical answer. Everybody, everyone that I heard would uh wanted to kill Revenant. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. No way. Hey, but you know what? You know what, Bert? Like he's he's probably a dirty little robot. He's probably got some <laughs> tricks up his sleeve that Marvin and Pathfinder couldn't even comprehend, and he's all yours, buddy. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know? Dude, you see he walks around like crap. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, no. He, he He's I mean, a very mean person. It's just like, no. But Pathfinder's totally a cuddler, though. Oh, he definitely is. I can definitely yeah, see Yeah, Pathfinder's gay as hell. They <laughs> they should have made him gay instead of Gibraltar. <laughs> True. Yeah. I think there's still room in the water. Yeah, yeah, boy. Out of all the characters in Apex, I was not expecting those three to be in, in a fuck, marry, or kill. So <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah. So, anyways, back to uh, video games, man. Um, <laughs> it, oh, boy. You, you played Outlast. Yeah, I played Outlast a long, long time ago. Yeah, long and you did a, you did a BS review for it. Oh, there you go. Or is it Outlast 2 that you did the review for? No, it was Outlast 1. I still have not beat okay. Outlast 2. It's tough, though, because there's so many games to play, and I just don't have enough time to play them. Sure. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. So, y- I, you sa- I think you said something about how it wasn't, like, the scariest game you played, but it was definitely really scary or something, or do you, re- do you remember saying something along those lines? Uh, I definitely did say it was really, really scary, but I didn't find it overly scary. Um, well, this it guy's definitely a is psychopath. It, it's it's honestly <laughs> weird, dude. I I love horror games. I I love the act of okay. getting scared, especially from something that's actually a little bit made believe, you know, fictional. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The, the, I don't get scared that easily, but what does actually terrify me is I've had a few times in a dream where um I think it's like paralysis or something. I don't know what the technical term oh is, God. or it feels like someone's like literally standing at your door, right? And you can't even move, but yeah. it seems really, really oh, real. I that shit scares that me. Too. That shit will yeah. literally terrify me. But anything else, I love. I love it. I used to have a VR system, and I would just play a whole bunch of horror games. And I, I liked. I don't know. I liked the act of getting scared. It was kind of like it's a lot of adrenaline, a lot of just like you know, shit rushing. I guess if that got a fucking massive that really makes sense. There. But Holy shit. <laughs> I like. I like horror games a lot. Okay. You're like that one girl that I went to school with that was like, punch me in the face. Cut, let me cut my wrist and rub it all over you while you Ooh. fuck me. I don't know who you went to school with. That's kind of fucked up. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little weird. It was some weird Christian college. Were you into but, it? Uh, I mean, not don't really. Lie. Don't lie. It's just <laughs> it us made me. <laughs> it made me want to yeah. poop more than I wanted to fuck her. That's for sure. I don't know why. <laughs> Just like literally listen or talk to about about it. I was like, this is giving me gas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, she, uh, yeah. one of my friends, she was like, she told him, she's like, hit me in the face. She's like, do it. <laughs> he squared up too. He's getting ready to. He's like, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's funny. No, I, I I can give you her number though, Conquer, if you want. I mean, it sounds like if you fucking genuinely <laughs> enjoy like jerking off to things like Outlast, then <laughs> you, you guys might get along. Outlast. Oh, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. I don't know. It's sure. just like scary games. Like I don't know. I like them. I, I even had a friend. He played like a lot of Devour and kind of um in silence with some homies and when they were like looking at my footage and whatnot they told me i gotta just like pretend to be more scared because it's kind of bland when i just don't react that much Mm -hmm. so that's the problem that's That's why i don't play a lot of horror games on stream and stuff like that is because i don't have like a spontaneous reaction as someone who's actually gonna shit themselves okay Yeah, I do. Like if somebody walks at me too fast, I kind (laughs) of like dribble a little bit. (laughs) It's bad. And it's cum too. It's not piss. (laughs) I I assumed it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All the emotions, I can't sort them out in the moment. So what? if you need someone to be your bitch, though, when you play horror games... Team up with Bert and Burger on stream sometime, Conker. You <laughs> oh, you God. play the game, and we'll just kind of sit over your shoulder and watch. It's I'm crazy. down. I'm down. You guys, you guys will do the yeah. reaction. You guys will scream like little bitches anytime you know a little jump scare comes out. <laughs> Not even a jump scare, yeah, exactly. like a drop of water or something's gonna make us piss. <laughs> oh, so. oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Slow down. Yeah. yeah. So. My God, we have beaten Outlast One and Whistleblower together. We we take turns when things gets too scary, um, mm-hmm. and we are highly intoxicated off of you know alcohol. What? I want to recommend to Bad. you guys. I did this one time. 
you guys should both play Outlast together, but one person... Do you play it on controller or PC? Controller. Okay, we'll get it on PC. One person operates <laughs> the keyboard, the other person operates the mouse. That's oh, pretty good. no. <laughs> okay. Do that. It's fucking... I actually shot myself doing it that way <laughs> because I did it with my girlfriend, and she's not that competent with, like, mouse and keyboard movements, and it was struggle. Like, it was a struggle, but also, like, since I had no control over one of the actions, I just... It definitely made me a lot more scared. Oh, especially with all the chasing that yeah. happens in that game. Yeah. Oh, my God. Do it. I, it's, no it's fun. It's fun. Hmm. <laughs> That's so funny. It sound again. This guy. This guy definitely likes to get pegged, Bert. <laughs> I don't know if that's... he likes the lack of control and things. <laughs> well, he maybe. likes to be tied up. Guarantee it. <laughs> that could be fun. Um, it's all right, Conquer. Bert likes to be pegged too. So, anyways, um, <laughs> oh dear God. It, but yeah, no. Outlast was is is just it was is very tough. It's very scary, and uh, I I I am the biggest like pussy when it comes to scary things like that. I used to tell people that I I don't used to tell people. I tell people I was used to be scared of like a fairly odd parents game on the Game Boy. By the way, Timmy Turner would crawl up a ladder. It would it would just kind of freak That's me out. Said. I'm like something about that motherfucker the way he goes up that ladder. Don't I like mean, it. No offense to you or anything, but just like I would, I would hate living that kind of life, just being so scared of everything, man. <laughs> sure, it sucked. What I fun? Bet. Like I would just be so petri- like terrified of you know the next thing to come around the corner, the next person, even like a little video game like fucking Minecraft. There's yeah. people out there that say Minecraft the scariest game ever. <laughs> you know? So oh, boy. so. You kind of combine both Bert and I into that that scary story there. So mine was like oh, more over media's like like video games, movies, things like that. Bert's is real life. Bert's terrified of the dark. Like he can't sleep without a fucking nightlight. Oh, big time. Um, oh, he yeah. also uh, he doesn't like to when he's going out for his morning jogs that have happened one time in his twenty two years of existence. <laughs> He doesn't like to run through the woods because there might be somebody in the trees that wants to to rape him. <laughs> yeah. Him out of all I people. I had to take my earbuds out and finish my run because I'm like, somebody's definitely going <laughs> to catch me. I, I used to be scared of, like, the basement. You know, the like, typical, like, when you're a kid, you turn off the lights in the basement and you fucking haul ass, like, on all fours up the stairs. <laughs> I used to, I used to yeah. do that, too, because our basement was, unre- uh, you know, unrenov- uh, unrenovated. Yeah, and unfinished, right? And sure. then eventually, I was kind of yeah. just tired of being scared, so I just like went down there with like a butter knife and just started like pretending there was someone down there and Slash. just be like, "Come at me, come at me," and just like running around the basement. And all of a sudden, he was getting pinned up out. against the cement wall. He's like, "This is kind of hot." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's when he went from being scared to being horny. <laughs> My my, oh, my fear my. Of, of scary things kind of turned to more of like a fetish, you know? <laughs> exactly, blood. exactly. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Bert just, he went the opposite. He went from being horny to being scared. <laughs> <laughs> looked oh, up yeah, some spooky yeah. shit and um, <laughs> well, <laughs> never looked it up I again. I definitely do not like that. I saw this. So... Go go ahead, man. I said he'll be just so terrified he'll just have an orgasm just, just mid-fright. <laughs> Yeah, you, no. you, you confused your brain, dude. Seriously. <laughs> Doesn't know whether to run or come. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, I saw this I saw this one video. I'm not going to tell you the name of the website, but uh, it was this clown blowing somebody. So, um, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's it, nice. You, it, it was definitely wasn't NFL.com or anything, but... ESPN. Yeah, it was literally th- like a girl dressed up like the It Clown. Like Pennywise. Oh, nice! And she was doing all this like creepy shit. Uh, Daddy just watched thumbnail. I didn't. Did I watch more of it? Mm-hmm. I can't remember now. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I I didn't nut to this one though. I think it was. Uh, I don't know. I couldn't think of anything scarier than it. Um, okay. it was weird. Like she's doing this creepy thing while she's giving him head, and I'm like, huh? Aren't you scared she's gonna bite it off or something, dude? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, puts his wiener in the drain pipe. <laughs> you might as well be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seriously. I'm like, anyway, not his. man, that thing's got something growing on it, dude, if you like that. Seriously, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, it was probably Conker's wiener that was recording it, though. To be honest, since he likes that creepy shit. Oh my god, man! I got I got channels everywhere, not just not just uh, YouTube and Twitch, right? You'll find Same, me on OnlyFans. Bro. You'll find yeah. me on Pornhub, X Hamster. <laughs> exactly. I actually wanted yeah. to make a, a Pornhub account one time, and I was just planning on literally posting my uh, Call of Duty fails and me literally just getting fucked. Getting fucked. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, this is a perfect like, you know, just meme it, and then like. When I went to go make an account, it asked for like a lot of verification and like doing emails and a lot more shit that I just wanted. I didn't really want to fucking commit to giving them all <laughs> yeah, my information. Like, this is a meme. It's just supposed to be a meme, right? But <laughs> yeah, they made yeah. they thought I was gonna be all serious with it, and I was like, ah, fuck it, it's not worth my time. <laughs> yeah, not right now. Yeah. <laughs> verification pictures, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you could make like uh, like a remix of that one hardcore porn compilation that I talked about, where it was just oh these girls getting absolutely railed. Like I'm talking, like the guy was like hitting her from behind and had his like fingers in her fucking nostrils and shit. Oh my god! <laughs> and while it was like this real demonic music playing, kind of like the music Bert talked about on his podcast with the two therapists. <laughs> okay. And um, just in the background, Conquer were word, random words while it was happening, like fucking slut <laughs> and stupid whore. Like these random fucking things in the corner. So you should do that for your COD videos while you're getting bent over. <laughs> That's definitely an idea. <laughs> yeah. 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 Definitely. <laughs> and it was just like stupid little bitch. And I'm like, what? But n- talking to Conquer though, I know why these videos exist now in the first place. I mean, <laughs> for God's there's a market for it. It's a market for everything. <laughs> yeah, oh, big time. Yeah, yeah. I shoot your shot. Yeah, no. <laughs> As they say. I don't know. Yeah, we we went from Conquer, uh, not Conquer, uh, Outlast, uh, hardcore porn. So let me bring back the Google Doc here. So. Uh, uh yeah, uh Man Eater. That was a crazy game. You liked it, huh? It wasn't the, I thought <laughs> oh it was God. just super cool. I mean, like for it being such a short game, is you know, it was pretty basic. You literally just had your left click and your right click. So I play on PC, I don't know if people play on keyboard, but anyways, you had your basic attack, you had your special attack. It was as bland as you know and repetitive as it got, but I, I kinda had this sense of, you know, satisfaction to it playing through it, right? And for it being an mm-hmm. easy game, eight to nine hours to 100% it, I was like, fuck yeah. You know, I wouldn't pay full price for it. That was like a $45 game. Fuck no. But for it being free on Xbox <laughs> Game Pass, I liked it. Um, yeah. Huh. It's interesting that you say that. I thought it was too complex. Are you serious? And not simple well, enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, lol. You really? play video games a lot more than <laughs> I do, though. <laughs> Yeah, he's not a big RPG <laughs> Actually, guy. What game, yeah, what games I, do you like playing? Uh, I like uh, like just play dance. Roblox? Okay, and, tell him. <laughs> um, My Little Pony. S- sorry, sorry is a good board game. Uno, no. Um, okay, Uno yeah, slaps. He likes Uno. I mean, Uno Uno's yeah, a Uno great fucks. Game. Uh, no, usually I don't know. So I was literally expecting it to be like. Three buttons are only used on the controller because I played on Xbox, and the other buttons weren't even going to be used. And then it goes in and it's telling you like all of these things to do at like different parts of the and things like that. It's like when you bite on, you got to shake the stick, and then you can press the bite button a couple of times to do really good. And then you can hold this button to jump out of the water, and you could do a double thing and flip back in and fight all these people and everything. And I'm like, I literally thought this was gonna be like an iPhone game or like an iPod Gen One game or something like that. So I thought it was more. Yeah more complex than I thought it was going to be, I guess. Like, there was a lot of shit you could do um, in, in that game and all the different ways, like, you can evolve and make your shark stronger and all this shit. How, how you get it, how you get to the stronger evolutions and shit is repetitive and super fucking simple, but there was just kind of a lot of different ways, I felt like, that you could you could go about customizing the son of a bitch. 
No. This looks like Assassin's Creed. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, literally, it looks like yeah. You you should try it out, Bert. It's on the Game Pass. Sorry, you it said Man Eater kind of like looks awesome. like Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah, it's just like there's health bars everywhere. I, Have all these crazy moves and shit. I mean, like you could really just honestly just press one button and just make it through the entire game. I feel like the game probably made it a lot more complex than it needed to be, but I don't think I ever stopped just pressing probably. the X button or left click. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 and that's what i'm that that's the main point is like i thought it would just be simple and you could press the button over and over again but it was a little bit more complex but yeah i died by an alligator and just uninstalled it immediately i'm like done that was the fun. alligators are tough the alligators are tough at the beginning <laughs> i wasn't able yeah. to fuck with them i just had to run away from every single alligator i found <laughs> yeah poor whore really bites hard yeah no i got i i literally got to the part where the one guy like cuts you out of his mom and then you bite his fucking hand off. I forgot what his name was. It's like one eye lizard, something Larry Pete. or something. Yeah, that stinky Pete. <laughs> I don't yeah, remember so- his name. Something Pete. I know that. Yeah, and he just ripped your fucking hand off, and he didn't even give a shit. He's like a little nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but no, I mean, it 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 was it was definitely uh, it was it was a cool game though. I I, I think I I definitely agree with most of the things that you said in your your bs review for it so um it was just more uh complicated for my fucking pea brain probably wasn't that complicated i just don't have the patience to put, invest how to learn a game when i don't give a shit about it like i tried to do pandemic the board game and there was no tutorial at all and i'm like okay this is fun why couldn't these two switch like why couldn't they fucking have switched like one was like overly complicated and the other one was like overly simple. It's like, come on, bitches. There's different games for different, you know, different strokes for different folks. Like I, I remember even like I took me like five times just to even get into Skyrim. Or even to this yeah. date, like I still don't know what the fuck I'm doing for Subnautica and shit like that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of games are just kind of pretend. <laughs> no, they just like throw you in it and they're like, hey, figure it out. And I'm like, what? Like, no, no God, no nothing. Yeah. Mm hmm. I don't know how you guys how you yeah. guys give things that much patience. As soon as they don't tell oh, daddy how to like do that. something, I'm like, okay, bye. I'm telling everybody I, I how fucking, shit this game is. I love video games. That's basically all I want to do with my oh, time. Yeah. So not too good. Like yeah. I'll, I see a lot of these streamers and stuff like that, and like no disrespect to like I, I don't even know why I said no disrespect to them. It wasn't even supposed to be disrespectful. A lot of them are building their communities <laughs> off of like engaging with their audience and stuff like that. And they're like, I just really want to have this, like, connection and, like, make sure, you know, like, you know, have, have like, a sincere audience connection. And I'm just like, dude, I just want to play video games for a living. Like, that's it. As simple as it comes, mm-hmm. right? I'm not trying mm-hmm. to be rude. I'm and just, I, I deadass just want to play video games for a living. And that's my goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You need to be, like, those people that uh, literally do an entire gameplay without commentary or face cam or anything they just upload them playing the fucking game oh, <laughs> i also want to have personality to it that's why i kind of avoided like i there was some like playthroughs like i could do an entire playthrough on my single players but i didn't really enjoy doing that content either because then you got like mm-hmm. it's a lot to talk through just for like a little uh, let alone like an hour of recording it's it's hard to you know keep it entertaining and stuff like that so i've tried to figure out how to make content that could force me to still play single player games and I've had to thought of, I've had to think yeah. about this for a very long time because the only way I knew how was to do these multiplayer games. And like, as much as I love Apex, as much as I love Warzone, like it's not my heart and soul. My heart and soul goes to these RPGs, these MMOs, and just being a diverse gamer, a variety gamer. So until I found out a way where like I kind of started this no BS series, and that was kind of my my gateway to start doing more single player games and build a channel off of that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you'd. Um, could, is there any way, do you think of, um, like expanding, I don't even know, like the no BS kind of stuff into longer, like a longer length stuff for YouTube? No, I, I, I do. I do. Um, it takes a lot of time to make these YouTube videos and edit them through. And I'm kind of like at the stage of after doing this content for a year and a half, I just finished university. I worked for two, two years as an accountant. And um, okay. it's, it's something I just don't want to do and I don't want to get back to. So after pursuing this, uh, not really wanting to go to another job, I'm going to be moving back with home to my parents at the end of July to really pursue content and put my all into it. 
Um, mm-hmm. I'm really just, I, I forgot where this conversation led to. I just forgot. What, can you, can you remind me? I had a little brain fart. We're, it's oh, okay. So, so sorry. Question so right. yeah. Um, no, no, it was, it was a really good question. I do want to put it to YouTube. That's what you're talking about. But the thing is, it takes a lot of time to make those YouTube videos. And a lot of those times YouTube is a little slow and with, with growing. Mm-hmm. So I do want to do videos on YouTube, but I want to just stick to the new games and rather leave the old games that I've played because mm-hmm. it's easy. I remember how the game was. I get some footage. I record. I have to say it's uploaded. But for a new game, I got to have to like it's going to be a lot more SEO optimized. A lot of people are going to be searching for that game because it just came out compared to an old game that came out, you know, a few years ago. So in order right. to get an honest review on it, too, I got to play the game for like eight to 12 hours, if not more, to get a good review on it. Right. So True. I want to any yeah. new game that comes out, I'm going to do another review on it and put it on a separate channel. And I want to make the reviews less than five minutes. I think five minutes is, you know, fully digestible and a lot. You, you can fit probably pretty much everything you need to in five minutes. But oh, yeah. I want to I want to try doing the David David Dobrik David Dobrik special and kind of put it at four minutes and 20 seconds for every single cut to BS. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, have you actually gotten uh, to the point in TikTok where they've unlocked like the three minute videos? Yeah, I got to it, no? but I want to try to make my TikToks as short as possible because a lot of it has to do with attention span, and I feel like I'm not oh, yeah. uh, that. I feel like just the content that I produce is more catered towards shorter formed content. I was even thinking of changing my main channel, Conquer ninety seven, to uh, shorter minute videos, definitely less than eight minutes or you know around six minute videos and see how that kind of does because yeah. a lot of people are in a kind of time day and age where a lot of people just don't have a lot of time anymore right they don't have time right. to sit through a good 30 minute video like one of my favorite youtubers right now is green he's a minecraft youtuber he does um hermit craft series all his videos are above 23 minutes his latest one was 39 minutes i fucking can't wait for his videos to come out but he <laughs> just does an excellent yeah. job with storytelling i just don't know if i'm you know, at that position or the style that I like to produce my content is capable of those long storytelling 30 minute long videos. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like you, you kind of need a dedicated audience. That's really like able to, I mean, even like some stuff that I do, it's like, I don't really have too much time. I mean, I have a lot of time, but like, I pretend like I don't have a lot of time, <laughs> But, like, I just have so many YouTube videos pinned, like, on Google Chrome, and I just get to them when I get to them. Because, I don't know, it's like, do you do you remember C-Nanners? Yeah, of course. Yeah, all his videos were, like, super short. And I kind of wished, like, for more. You know what I mean? It's like, there's always a sweet spot. Like, I see a lot of your videos are, like, 10 to 15 minutes, and I think that's kind of perfect. That's a lot. Yeah. But then it's, like, I don't know. A lot of people, like, uh, think that, too. Like, I asked my... um my um my followers and people like on my discord stuff what they want and they always said to like make it longer but um yeah i mean it, it at the end of the day it, it's a lot longer to edit it's a lot longer to film it's a lot longer to make sure you get that storytelling aspect really good so even oh, like yeah. even like the maybe even like the short i was even thinking the shorter form content would be good because i kind of leave the people hanging wanting more right if you cut yeah, the video just for sh- growing purposes yeah right and that's why tiktok really blew up yeah. too is because people like that short form content mm-hmm. now that is pretty nice too yeah and even to be able to go through a catalog of somebody new you know just to like to like going through your tiktok you know you can just go from one to the next to the next and then be like oh i do like this guy and then go check him out on youtube or whatever exactly like it's kind of perfect exactly yeah so I, I definitely have a lot of plans for that um cut the bs stuff and I wanted to separate yeah. it because it's it's a little bit of a different niche. You know, obviously, I, I like to think that people that kind of play like Warzone or Apex are a little bit, in a sense, closed-minded. They kind of like the game that they play and don't really play anything else, right? They they yeah. have their game and they're they're a little bit more stubborn when it comes to new content. But I'm not saying everybody's like that. I'm just saying a majority, rather than people that play like single players and kind of like the variety streamers will kind of fuck with whatever you play, right? So I kind of had to diversify oh, yeah. the content that way and just completely make another channel for that. Mm-hmm. So do you have another channel other than the Conquer 97? I have a Cut the BS channel um, that I have one video. I did see that. It's recent. I just I yeah. recently just uploaded on my link tree. Um, I have a Ghost of Shushima video that I did a Cut the BS on uh, that was uploaded 10 months ago, like August, something like that. August 2020. Yeah. 
So I, I think I'm going to upload all of my TikToks into YouTube Shorts there of all of video games that are old. And then hopefully when I come around to playing uh, oh. a brand spanking new game that came out, I will make a four minute and 20 second long actual YouTube dedicated video for that. Proper resolution okay. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Or something else cool that like we do, um, we do highlight clips and uh, then like in the description or whatever we say, hey, go check out like the YouTube video for the full clip or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like I've done stuff like that. It's like that, that uh, obviously we're not big enough for that like to see the direct results of i guess content even that's if one or two people towards... transfer over that's worth it right regardless of yeah. I, I like to always think of numbers rather than the actual like physical like the, the large numbers more in like a ratio aspect right because then you have like a proper yeah. indication of what those numbers mean right without without the percentage without the you know something to relate it to it doesn't really mean much right yeah yeah but um i i do want to eventually transfer over that cut the bs stuff to more like a a tech review channel as well and kind of compete with like people like unbox therapy and and marcus brownlee um Mm -hmm. because i feel like a lot of people a lot of people you know a large majority of this population isn't looking for all the technical aspects of a review like they don't want to know you know the aperture the the lens lens stuff like that or like how much a TV, you know, the refresh rate, like a lot of that is, is, is people just don't know and they don't care for that. They just want a, a straight cut the BS review, five minutes of a tech or something like that, right? So I have a lot of yeah. things. Like I might, okay. I might have just like fucking just said too much and hopefully, you know, someone that finds your video is going to start doing this before me. <laughs> um, yeah. But I, no, that is a good idea. I though. have a few things that I, I still need to do. Just start the tech up channel for that, right? Mm-hmm. And hopefully can expand yeah. into that because like there's everyone's doing long form content, um, but no one's really doing a short formed review content that I know of. Yeah, so I def- yeah, we've we've talked to some other YouTubers and they've definitely said like, or at least have agreed that uh, the best or like the big channels that really end up blowing up kind of find their niche yeah. and then just like exploit the hell out of exactly. it. Exactly. So right now so I'm like kind if of, you can find that. I'm putting Conquer 97 on a hold kind of my personality multiplayer stuff and really putting a lot of attention into uh cut the BS cause there's a gap in the market that needs to be filled and I'm um, hopefully right. going to tackle that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Your, your cut the BS things. I mean, again, I, I went through when I saw your first one, I checked out your profile, and I, I I didn't even look at the analytics. I I just assumed that you were a bigger channel, for how well produced your 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 content was throughout all of your BS reviews and things like that. So I mean, I honestly expected you to be like in the high hundreds of thousands, even millions. I'm like, there's no way this guy could come on the podcast. And then you, right? it's like very, you know, great thing to hear from a creator. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I love your show. I'm pretty sure I followed your stuff before I even asked you to come on the show. And Bert knows that it, it ain't easy for your daddy to follow somebody. Like I'm very particular. <laughs> hey, with I'm the shit. same way, bro. I don't like following just anybody. Right. I see these mm-hmm. TikTok accounts yeah. that have thousands of followers. I'm like, bro, like I, I have to like watch someone's content like five times before I even decide if I want to follow. And if I, if I see myself keep coming back to them, like I'll toss them a follow. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, very, yeah. just very picky with, with who I follow. So just by the way that things were produced and looked and everything like that, I just assumed it was a bigger channel. And then I realized that I'm like, okay, it, it, it I think, yeah, your first video was back in February. And I'm like, okay, so he's just getting started, at least for the, the cut the VS review ones I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so this guy, and I, I was telling Bert, I'm like, this guy really looks like he's he has something here that, that could be something big someday. So we, uh, we better get him while his Peter's small before all the <laughs> supermodels are sucking on it and shit. So. Yeah, definitely. So... Um, Gosh, you you definitely man. want to keep up that aspect of things. The number one I have thing I have heard from all content creators is yeah, if you're funny, if you have good personality, that it's going to come naturally for you. The number one thing that you can control is the quality of your stuff. 
if the audio's good, if the lighting is nice, if it looks appealing, those are things that you actually can control that will make a difference in your shit. So right at the beginning, Bert and I spent actual money on 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 microphones. We 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 had like just our basic fucking headset mics or it sounded so Apple <laughs> Apple mics or something like that from the headphones. And just did that, and then we were like, "No, I we better spend money." This was like episode two or three, and we we're like, "We better, we better get something legit." And, and that was the, one mm-hmm. of the biggest things that we've heard from people when we were starting out: is your audio quality sounds really good. It sounds really, really good. Content might be ass, and we're getting tired of you talking about fucking gay pornography all the time. But it's it it sounds good at least. I feel like the most important thing for a creator is definitely the audio. You need to make sure you have spot on audio because no one's going to want to hear no choppy bullshit. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. So so that that was the big thing that stuck out to me is the the way you format everything. I I really did think it was was, was a huge channel on on talk. So and it's growing um, pretty good, too. I mean, every time I look at you, you have more and more subs. Uh, kind of thing and, and you're making content that people want to see so uh it, i think it's gonna take off i i can't say if you're gonna be you know up there with pewds or anything but do time with, with, do time yeah oh okay. yeah, yeah but but definitely you, you you got something going here and it's growing uh it's growing pretty fast for you man so um but uh, I, I, I think you really got – it looks like you did something on Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I just noticed that. Yeah, that was – I, I think that, that was uploaded um, a few days ago. Okay. Maybe two days ago. I, I'm going to like it. I haven't even watched it. Dude, I'm days. honestly Ooh, so surprised at how many people dislike Assassin's Creed. Like, I get it. I really do. It's not the same Assassin's Creed game anymore. It shouldn't even be called Assassin's Creed. But the thing is, if they go and keep producing their old, bland style of content that people don't really like anymore – don't get me wrong, there's still a select few people that do like that style and they prefer that old style. I get it, but you're you're a fucking boomer. Like shit's <laughs> changed. Like games have evolved. Yeah. You can't be making the same fucking cut and dry. Like if you wanted to make the same Assassin's Creed as Assassin's Creed 2 and 3, you're going to run out of fucking ideas. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh yeah. Like it, it is what it is. Rogue and Syndicate fucking flopped, so they had to change and they had to they had to, you know, change their their method and that's where Origins Odyssey and Valhalla came and they've been fucking phenomenal for Ubisoft. But people are still so fucking butthurt because it's still called an Assassin's Creed game. They should change it, don't get me wrong. But I think they call it Assassin's Creed because of the fact that it has a name. To, there's value behind the Assassin's Creed name, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like a notorious double it's, A triple It's honestly it also with like the cut the BS stuff, man. Like I really, really respect when someone can come into my comments and be like, you know what? Like, I disagree with you because of this. I think this game deserves this. And like, you know what, man? You're like, I 100% agree with you. Like, you deserve, you're entitled to your own opinion. And people should learn how to agree to disagree, right? Exactly. I feel like, I feel like people as like a whole, like, a down, pes- <laughs> a pes- especially as like yeah. a Western civilization, like people get so divided between their political views or the things that they believe in when it comes to COVID and vaccinations, but not a lot of people realize that you can agree Or just straight-up video game views. It doesn't even have to be that complicated. I mean, it can be like, hey, this game sucks, and then, you know, he starts making right. fun of your mom and how your family's weird and how you're fucked up and everything like that, and you don't know anything <laughs> and shit like that. Like, you know, I, I'm more of a Skippo person rather than, Uno, you stupid son of a fucking bitch, and just starts interviewing you and interrogating you and everything like that. It's okay for people not to fucking want to suck the cock of everything Every fucking game you play, Bert. What? That's what Conker's saying. He's saying you're, you're a dumb fuck. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, no. But there's like people in my comments that literally just tell me that I'm fucking wrong and like you're like you're just your your account's full of BS. And I'm like, nah, dude, like I can have my own fucking opinion. Mm-hmm. I can enjoy a game oh, yeah. and you don't have to. Don't come in here and tell me I'm wrong. If you want to say you don't like the game, I respect that, but don't come in here and tell me I'm fucking wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's annoying. It is annoying. It's very, very, very annoying. It's real annoying, actually. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it fucking sucks. Um, <laughs> um, no, it's weird. 
I got so sick and fucking tired of Assassin's Creed games. People that are saying that they ha- they're, they've evolved too much are people that are literally all caught up in the nostalgia of the old games. They were making ass games for a while. Assassin's Creed was flopping hard. It was getting so much shit. And then all of a sudden, Origins and Odyssey comes out and revolutionizes Assassin's Creed. And changes it. The reason why it played the way that it did back then is because it's on a fucking 360. It wasn't on a fucking Xbox One or anything like that or the next-gen consoles. Mm -hmm. So now the fact that the the console can actually process all of this crazy shit you can do now, you're you're mad that they took advantage of it. If you want an old-style fucking just walk over stab walk over stab i remember in the old assassin's creed <laughs> games you could take out like 30 fucking people it didn't matter how many people were there you, you could you could kick all their asses oh, yeah. nowadays it's like as long as you god tender, damn right? that yeah. Chris, that warhawk there she's a bit tough she's a bit fucking higher than me i i don't know if i want to fuck with that pig just yet he's a feisty little bitch isn't she yeah. It really is that fucking first like legendary animal you come across. Fucking Warthog just kicked my ass. Kicked the ever living hell out of my ass. And then back in the old ones, you could literally take down like nine separate people at the same time. Oh, I just yeah. go click in the parry button properly and you can just parry every single person. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, matter, but then yeah. I, I get nervous and I can't do that all the time. But the the big thing is is for me with Odyssey, Odyssey was like very close to one of the most perfect games I've ever played. Everything about it was, I thought, was how a video game should be from the storytelling, from the acting, especially the scenery, the setting, the graphics, the um, the the characters. You really got into the characters. And as far as the missions go, they were fun and they were unique somewhat. And then the way you could go about things and the fighting was fun and you felt in control and you actually felt powerful, but it wasn't easy. There was ways. I mean, everything about it was like what I want in a game and I absolutely loved it. Um, kind yeah. of thing. And then I get people telling me that it's probably the worst Assassin's Creed ever. And I'm like, okay, well, well maybe, maybe <laughs> it's, fuck it's <laughs> maybe I'll go play the old ones on the fucking Game Boy then. And then I tried it out and I'm like, this is literally make me want to shove nails down my cock. Like, I just, I don't know what else to say <laughs> here, guys. A bunch of fucking boomers. They just want to be upset. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's yeah. easy to be upset. Be mad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, have you played uh, the Atlantis DLC for Odyssey? No, see, I didn't. That's literally like a, it's old separate thing, isn't it? It's a DLC oh boy, to Odyssey. Spoiler the, territory. I'll take my head. The off. Atlantis DLC is probably uh-huh. one of the best DLCs I've ever played. They just it literally did, could be its own so game much, almost. Uh, it could, dude. There was so much content to it that I was blown away by the Atlantis DLC. Mm-hmm. No, I y'all are gonna make me finish it. I, I I did I did see it. I was thinking about getting it. Um, and it ties into like the main overall Assassin's Creed story pretty well from what I've seen online. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I played Odyssey first and then went back and played Origins because I love like the Greek mythology shit and everything. Real awesome setting. So, and then the Egyptian stuff's cool as well. So, um, mm-hmm. I'm I'm going backwards with that, but. One thing that I, one more thing that I wanted to talk about was before we wrap everything up is uh, a game that I know you and Bert like a lot, and um, that is the the mm-hmm. ghost of uh, uh, Tsushima the tsunami or whatever it was called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, just wondering what you boys boys thought of that one. Definitely wanted to to bring that up real quick. Give it to you first, Bert. Oh, yeah, no, that's kind of another, um, I guess you'd say it's probably, for Burger, the most like Assassin's Creed. It's kind of like a over-the-shoulder sword fighter, and uh, oh my god, it's amazing. I haven't beaten it yet. I'm really bad at, like, starting games and not actually following through with finishing them. Like, Sekiro, I th- I'm pretty sure I'm, like, at the final boss. And I just, like, couldn't beat it. And then I just, like, now it's not on my computer for some... I probably got pissed off and deleted it, to be honest. But, um, yeah, no, Ghost of Tsushima is a lot like Sekiro, but more like... um, I, I don't know. It seems a little bit more like 
not fantastical as Sekiro is. It's a lot more realistic, I guess. But yeah, I it is very. Cool. I really, really, really enjoyed Ghost of Tsushima. I mean, it's I played it when it first came out. It's probably been a year, so my knowledge of it might be, you know, n- not all there. But from what I remember, mm-hmm. that game, like, it was stunning in every single fucking aspect. It was crazy, was crazy, crazy good. Like, the PlayStations had some phenomenal exclusives that that's where Sony, Sony kind of shines is through the, some of their exclusives. And I, I love that. Like, especially Horizon Zero Dawn is one of my favorite video games ever. And it's just, it's oh a PlayStation gosh. exclusive. Well, it just recently came to PC, but fuck, it's awesome. It's so good. Yeah. No, I... I it's weird. It's almost like Sony has its own kind of I don't I don't know if I want to call it an aesthetic or something, but it's like everything looks so professional. It's like Sekiro is just amazing and then Zero Dawn. It's like it it looks not futuristic like in the setting sense, but like it looks like some serious next gen stuff Beautiful. even though it's like the consoles however many years old. It's crazy. Beautiful games. Oh yeah. No, it's crazy. Like there's so much detail in Sek- or no, I'm calling it Sekiro. I'm horrible. I go to Tsushima. It's like you can play your flute and like there's all this crazy stuff. You can change your sword stances and stuff. It's crazy. There's a lot of games I want to go back and play, but I just I, I I feel like it would just take up too much of my time to go play like Far Cry Primal. A lot of my people ask me to do a review on that and I like really want to replay it, but you know, I gotta kind of focus more on content and just kind of play games or put out content of games I don't have content out for, right? Right. But um, did you guys check out E3 and the Xbox conference? Because it looks like Bethesda is really, really doing... I mean, Xbox is really doing well with their Bethesda acquisition, and they're putting a lot of games on Xbox Game Pass uh-huh. that, you know, putting fucking Sony in competition. You know, putting Sony in run for their money. Hey. I might actually have to check yeah, that I'd out. Yeah, I recommend it. They're out of, like, 37 out of the 40 new games they are coming out, Halo Infinite's going to be on Xbox. Um, Their new Starfield, I think it was called... All of their Bethesda games are pretty much going on there. Fours of fives going on there for free, too, for free. Wow. Yeah, no, Xboxes did really yeah, no, good. They're... Really good with their conference. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard people say that they think the Xbox is probably going to be the winner of this next generation. They've had zero. They've pretty much had zero wise. faults compared to the Sony. They've had a lot. Like, Sony's been having uh, drifts. They've been having lack of memory. Uh, their UI has kind of been faulty. They've been a lot of issues since the PlayStation 5 launched. And while Xbox has kind of had a pretty mint launch so far, you know, you, hmm. they, they said they said what they're giving you and they gave it to you. Yeah. Yeah. They just don't have any of the fucking consoles in stock. I know. Right. I told myself I'd buy a PlayStation so when the new God of War comes out or the new Horizon Forbidden West comes out. Then I told myself I'd buy the new PlayStation. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm hoping to get the Xbox. I got an email the other day that I could go into GameStop and pick it up, but all they had was the S left. Uh, check I'm Walmart. Like, I heard Walmart's a pretty pretty good outlet to get those um, consoles at. You just have to kind of keep your eye on it quite regularly. Yeah, slip somebody a 20. Exactly. I don't think that's really going to fucking do anything. <laughs> yeah. Bastard. Minty 20. I, it's, it's nice to hear uh, some PC players actually talk good about the uh, Xbox and Microsoft. Boy, the official podcast boys literally act like the Xbox is the fucking devil. They never say anything good about anything <laughs> with it and how it's such a piece of shit and it's so boring and everything and it's just consoles are stupid and dumb and it, so yeah, I, I heard nothing but terrible things about E3, so... It's good to hear. I, people just Red. always want to find something to bitch about, and I'm honestly kind of fucking sick and tired of it. I'm a very <laughs> optimistic person, even in my title. I'm very oh, overly too. optimistic gamer. I like to look in the good side of things, right? And, you know, as Boy, far as... Boy, you and Bert should 69. Yeah. Fuck. Oh, dude, I'm Jesus down, Bert. Worthy. Let's just, you know, we'll, we'll boot Burger after <laughs> yeah. this, and, you know, voice chat, and we'll just, you know, kick it. I had it. <laughs> yeah. exactly. but I mean I always like to look at the good side of things I always like to look at the things in relations to others right you're not going to really compare a fucking $3,000 PC to a $500 console of course you can in some aspects oh, yeah. but the Xbox is great for what it is right and so mm. is the Playstation oh, time, and so yeah. is the PC everything's good for what it is oh yeah right it's you know yeah. not going to be this revolutionary thing but for someone that's kind of like a casual gamer just wants to play these games there like fucking get yourself a console if you want to do mm-hmm. more than that if you want to get fucking three monitors and watch porn on every single monitor get yourself a <laughs> pc 
<laughs> yeah. 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 I think people have a hard time just viewing it through other people's eyes kind of thing. They're only looking at it from their perspective. I'm, so it's just like, oh, I'm a hardcore gamer. Gaming's my life and everything, so I have to get a $3,000 PC. But, oh, you want to get a $300 Xbox? What a fucking dumbass. You're so stupid. Just save up, buy a PC. It'll be so much worth it. But then, like, you get somebody like me that's a dumbass with video games, and it's like, I've played on PCs, and I'm like... You know, this is cool and all, but kind of just like my Xbox more, to be honest with you, fellers. I mean, it, it's, it, I don't know. I, I just, I can't really see the the uh, the differences. It's like when Bert really tried to show me some amazing graphics in Destiny. He's like, see, look at how great this grass is. And we're both staring at it, and he's like, eh, <laughs> actually, it's kind of like dog that. shit. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be looking for the nice, really nice qualities. Like for example, like a, a, a TV. I'm gonna notice the 4K. I'm gonna notice the, the you know, the high hertz. But if you're like, sh- if I'd show my same TV to my mom, she's not gonna give a shit, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Exactly. It's it's like a it's like a refined palette kind of thing. Right? It's it's you know different people like different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who who am yeah, I to fucking like... tell you what you should like and what you shouldn't like, right? That's why a lot of my reviews are kind of just from my perspective. But some people just take it too seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people can't stand the fact that if you like something that they hate, or if you hate something that they like, it's just it's so hard for people's little pea brains to kind of comprehend that. Like, uh, you don't like what I like? Well, you're a cunt then. So, yes, yeah, sir. You can fuck yourself. We we can't be friends. So, anyways, though, I mean, that's about the time that we have for uh, this episode of the BNB podcast. Conquer, do you want to shout out your shit to everybody? Sure. Um, thank you once again. Thank you guys so much for having me on this podcast. Never really had an opportunity to do something like this. Um, you can find yeah. me on Conquer ninety seven huh? on pretty much every single social. Um, sometimes I need to add an underscore for like Instagram and Twitter, but Conquer 97 and everything. Hopefully I can get rid of that 97 soon, but, uh, <laughs> that might not be for a little while. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah oh, and I guess also, sorry, follow me on my cut the BS reviews. Cause I'm, I'm going to be pushing that a lot more recently. And, and as far as TikTok goes, it's at Conquer games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And we'll have all your links. Uh, down in the description below for for YouTube and stuff like that. So check them out. Yeah. Um, lots of good content there, guys. So uh, give them a follow. But that's all we got for you guys at the end of the day. Just remember, it's just comedy. Chill the fuck out. We are just trying to bring a little bit of the family element to the podcast world. One more time, Bert, where can these beautiful ladies and gentlemen follow us on? Yeah, we have um, we have the full episode up on YouTube and Spotify, as well as uh, highlight clips up on Twitter and TikTok, with some extra fun game videos and and all that fun jazz up on talk throughout the week. Mm-hmm. So check us out. Check us out. And again, guys, we are officially over a thousand views. This is something that Bert and I really didn't think was going to happen any fucking time soon. So we greatly, (laughs) greatly appreciate it. Thank you for the first 1K again. We appreciate Mm -hmm. it. Conquer again, man. Thanks for coming on, man. All your links are going to be in the description below. So ladies and gents, check out our boy. It's a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. All right, guys. We'll see you all in the next episode. Take care. Peace.